Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to the hottest planet in the galaxy and maybe even the universe. Today we're going to be talking about the planet known as Kelt 9b and a new discovery coming from this very unusual object that technically should not even be called a planet anymore. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So if you were to find yourself on the surface of Kelt 9b, you would discover a lot of really interesting features, including some of the most unusual clouds ever. Clouds made up of different silicates, rocks and metals. And that's something that you don't really see anywhere in the solar system. This unusual planet is so hot for one reason. It's basically really, really close to its parent star. And its parent star is one of the hottest stars possible. The star known as Kelt 9 is what's known as a B-type star, and it's over 10,000 degrees in temperature. That's about double the temperature of our own sun. And the surface of this planet is a ridiculous 4,300 degrees Celsius, or roughly around 7,700 degrees Fahrenheit. So this right here, as of today, is the hottest planet we've discovered. But the recent study that you can find in the description below suggests that something else is happening on the surface of this planet that, in a sense, doesn't even qualify it as a planet anymore. The temperature here is so ridiculously hot that they literally can't be molecules anymore and become atoms. And they stay this way until they somehow make it to the other side of the planet, where it's just a little bit cooler so they can get reassembled into molecules once again. So what this actually creates is a very strange object. On the bright side, you have all of these atoms of various molecules that used to be here, but on the dark side, you get actual molecules once again. So things that we typically think of when we think of a planet, like for example, silicate oxides, which make up rock in our planet, or even things like CO2 and oxygen, which we breathe and make up our atmosphere, do not exist on the brighter side of Kelt 9b, which in a sense makes half of this planet not really a planet at all but instead some sort of a strange plasma-like cloud. But let's talk a little bit more about this planet before I continue about the study. So Kelt 9b is one of these so-called hot Jupiters, of which we discovered quite a lot of various planets. And one of the main reasons we've discovered so many already is really because they're really, really massive, they're really close to the stars, and so they're exceptionally easy to see. And a typical hot Jupiter would look something like this. This is a very, very large, very massive planet, extremely close to the star. And not only can you see these Jupiters pass in front of the star very easily, but you can also see them pull on the actual star, thus making it move across the night skies, which you can kind of see from this velocity graph right here. So these planets are exceptionally easy to find, and we've discovered quite a lot of them already. But some of these hot Jupiters are even more unique. A lot of them are so-called puffy planets, a lot of them are very, very low in density and are known as cotton candy planets, but some of them, like Kelt 9b right here, seem to be even weirder. Because as I mentioned, they don't seem to be planets anymore. They seem to qualify as something entirely different. Half planet, half some sort of a plasma cloud. Now these conditions are obviously created by the very, very powerful type B star that this planet orbits. And because the distance to the star is roughly around 3% of the distance of Earth to the Sun. So the amount of radiation this planet receives is absolutely ridiculous. And today we think that the UV radiation from the star is actually also slowly evaporating the planet. So you can kind of see the emissions coming out of this planet as it slowly orbits the star. A single orbit here is about one and a half days. But the thing is, because this planet is about 2.8 times the mass of Jupiter, it will probably take it a very, very long time to finally evaporate or change into something completely different. We don't really know how these planets evolve, we don't even understand what exactly is happening here, but we understand that the molecular dissociation into atoms seems to be a common sort of thing amongst these planets. This is not the only planet that we think has this kind of a unusual feature. And also, interestingly, some of these atoms are not even things that are pretty common here on Earth. A lot of them are, well, for example, iron and titanium. So this object actually seems to have very unusual formation of, I guess, what you would call metallic clouds that are these plasma clouds 
forming in front of it or basically between the star and the planet and then reforming into molecules on the other side. And since the most common element in these planets is usually hydrogen, it seems that even hydrogen is doing this as well. In other words, this planet changes hydrogen, which is usually H2, into these unusual dissociated atoms of hydrogen that then turn back into normal hydrogen clouds or the very hot hydrogen clouds on the dark side. And at the same time, scientists behind the study discovered that the difference between the bright side and the dark side of this planet doesn't seem to be too big. And this, of course, suggests that there has got to be some kind of a heat flow going on on this planet, and so the heat circulates around it even though the planet is always tidally locked. At the same time, the central heat spot of this planet is not actually in the center. So in other words, it's not somewhere here, but is instead shifted a little bit. And this is somewhat difficult to explain right now, but it might involve some sort of a collision that happened in the past that shifted this planet and changed its uh, composition. But if not collision, it could also be explained by really, really strong winds on the surface that change the um, actual hotspot by transferring the heat away from the center. So in some sense, this could also be explained if the planet is spinning really, really fast. And because of the proximity to the main star and because of the other features of this object, it also seems to have a direct effect on its star. In other words, as you can see from this image created by Evgeny Ashkolnik, the planet itself seems to interact with the magnetic field of the star and thus cause flares and all kinds of other effects on the star itself. So in other words, these planets now become kind of integrated with the star's behavior, which thus reinforces the idea that these are no longer planets, but instead these strange objects that create all of these features that do not exist in other star systems. We even have a very specific way to call these types of stars and these types of interactions. They're known as star-planet interactions, or SPI for short, and there's an entire body of studies dedicated just to this topic alone. And from all of the other unusual hot Jupiters we've discovered, we also realize that many of them have very strange orbital parameters. In many cases, they either move very differently from other planets, or have somewhat inclined orbits, or, in many cases, they also seem to have opposite orbits, retrograde orbits, which are somewhat difficult to explain. Now, this could be one of the reasons why these planets were able to get so close to the star to begin with. If they're orbiting against the flow, maybe there are more collisions happening to these planets, so they slowly make their way toward the star and thus uh, become engulfed by it eventually. But at the same time, it's very likely that something else entirely happens in these star systems to give these stars such a strange orbit. And because of their unusual orbit and their position in the star system, it's also very likely that many of these planets become what's known as disrupted planets. In other words, they become either destroyed or fall apart, creating smaller pieces, thus turning a larger gas giant into a bunch of smaller objects. Now, this is obviously not something we can prove very easily, but we've already seen at least one other system known as WASP-47 that seems to have several Earth-like and Neptune-like objects orbiting really close to the star, and there is an indication that maybe these were actually the result of a disrupted planet. In other words, they were created by a much larger, hot Jupiter-like planet that slowly fell apart, creating these smaller pieces. So basically, there are still a lot of different mysteries to solve in regards to these hot Jupiters, and more specifically, to the hottest planets out there, such as Kelet 9b. And the reason I wanted to create this collision right here is because I wanted to create a much more realistic image of what Calat 9b might really look like, because this explosion now generates this very powerful and very large plasma cloud on the surface. Now this is a much better representation of what Calat 9b might be like. This temperature here is probably around 5000 degrees, and it seems that a lot of material here on the surface would very likely turn into plasma and into atoms, and then change into something different on the opposite side. So this here is a slightly more realistic image of what's happening here. There's no real name for these objects just yet, we don't really know what to call them, but technically they're half cloud, half planet, and they also seem to have a direct effect on the parent star. We don't really know if these objects existed in the solar system, but there's a very high chance that they did. And what happened to them is another mystery. Because for example, what if our planet Earth was actually a result of a disrupted hot Jupiter that used to exist in the solar system. This would open up an entire new study that would hopefully one day help us understand how planet Earth formed and how other planets evolved as well.
But until we discover more, that's really it about the hottest planet in the galaxy. And if you'd like to learn more about it, check out some of the older videos that should be popping up somewhere right there. On that note, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.